Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Monday, January 29th, 2018. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, and action, and I should add a little bit of lulls. Today's show is titled Blockchain Nirvana and Cowboy State, and you can get the show notes at isheadlines.com. On this show, we're going to feature Blockchain Nirvana, SCOTUS Union Bust, Bundy Turns the Tide, Sophia's Glitch, and more on this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed. And now, here is your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Let's start that 20-minute clock now. Blockchain heaven could soon be created in Wyoming. So Wyoming is looking to make itself blockchain-friendly to attract blockchain-based companies to the state. Uh, grassroots, and this is from Coindesk. So, a grassroots group, the Wyoming Blockchain Coalition, has garnered significant momentum to pass a package of legislation that would bring significant benefits to both the blockchain community and the state of Wyoming. The package of blockchain bills, which would be introduced during the upcoming session in February, would build on two characteristics of Wyoming that make it particularly attractive to the blockchain industry. Zero corporate income or franchise taxes. I'm all for zero, by the way, when it comes to taxes. And strict privacy laws governing LLCs formed in the state. Companies don't need to move to Wyoming physically to take advantage. Just as most, most Delaware corporations aren't located in Delaware. And I know a couple of folks that have Delaware corporations that don't live in Delaware. But, 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 <laughs> that's what it says. I'm sure it's a typo. Not my typo, Coindesk. But there are reasons why businesses might want to move there. Cheyenne, the state capital, has tremendous fiber optic bandwidth and cheap power that is already attracting major data centers to locate there. Ooh, you could also see, maybe you'll see like in Washington state, there's a town that has some unbelievable hydro electric power that makes energy there really cheap. So it's becoming a, a haven for uh, uh, crypto miners. So maybe they'll get some crypto miners as, as well. Either way, you go uh, Wyoming, and and you know it's it's pretty cool. This is a this is definitely a longer leash type story. There, Wyoming is 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 it's creating more freedoms so that it can get more business. Good, good on you, buddy. Is SCOTUS set to become a union buster? Now, now, lest lest anyone get the thought that I am anti-union, let me offer this caveat before I. I share the story. First of all, I, as you know, anybody who follows the show, who follows iState knows I favor free associations in all forms, even union forms. As a matter of fact, I actually believe that unions, they're, they're going to happen. They're, they're going to be formed through free associations uh, in an unshackled mar market because, because People who have similar interests tend to want to associate together, especially if that association can give them uh, bargaining uh, leverage against other people. That's going to happen. So that being said, I fully embrace the potential for the Supreme Court to undo the coercive aspect of unions. Wherever it is mandatory to pay union dues, I am 100,000 gazillion percent in favor of en ending the mandatory aspect. And that that actually appears to be on the horizon here uh, if uh, SCOTUS makes some of the rulings that it, it looks like it may be making real soon here. And this is from, what is this from? This is from USA Today. 
Supreme Court may deal major blow to labor unions. The nation's powerful public employees unions stand to lose membership, money, and political muscle at the hands of the Supreme Court this year. The only question appears to be how much. On the court's docket next month are fees paid in 22 states by police, firefighters, teachers, and other government workers who decline to join unions that must represent them anyway. By the way, I'm against all government unions. Absolutely. The idea that uh, the government can lobby against non-government to get better pay and benefits is fundamentally anathema to my to my very bearing being but much more is at stake in a nation with declining union membership and growing economic i love the way they they put those two together like union membership and economic equality inequality are are necessarily one is causing the other after three tries in 2012, 2014, and 2016, the High Court is poised to reverse its own 40-year-old precedent and strike down the so-called fair share fees as unconstitutional. And I am all for it. Cliven Bundy turns tables on federal government. So after going through a sham trial that was eventually ended by a federal judge, who assaulted the prosecution for its unethical practices, Cliven Bundy is now going to put the federal government on trial, and this is from Fox News. Not a source that I regularly share from, by the way. Rancher Cliven Bundy recently freed Sue's Nevada and Clark County. Nevada rancher Cliven Bundy, who was recently cleared of federal charges and freed from jail, is now turning his sights on state and county government. Good for you, buddy! The Las Vegas Review-Journal reports that Bundy's lawsuit filed Thursday in Clark County District Court claims that former President Barack Obama's la late 2016 establishment of Gold Butte National Monument was as illegal as it is unlawful and would preclude him from continuing to function on his land and destroy his livelihood. Not that the government cares too much about that. The only way that they care, if that's actually true, the only way they care is if they feel like they're going to get a significant power backlash. If they don't think they're go they'll get a significant power backlash, they, they really don't care. Because remember, you're here. You know, as John Kennedy said, Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, you freaking commie. Bureau of Land Management's officials in Las Vegas put off discussion of the monument at meetings this month until the Trump administration decides on possible, well, whatever, whatever, whatever. Anyway, the big story here is Cliven Bundy is suing the government, and, and I like that. Sophia the robot glitches over Ukraine corruption questions. So here we have, we're just going to insert a little lols, because you got to have some lols in with your headlines that you may have missed. So Sophia went, went uh, political when asked if the corruption in Ukraine could end. See, you see what happens when with politicians, when you ask them a difficult question, they'll either totally not answer the question with like a whole barrage of, of, of word salad, or they'll freeze up like a bunny. Bunnies freeze up, man. They just totally lock up. You know, that wolf is bearing down on her like, oh, dude, what do I do? That's what happened to Sophia. And this is from RT. Oh, no. I'm reading Russian propaganda. Yay! Sophia Bot freezes when asked how corruption in Ukraine can be defeated. I, I've never heard this phrase. The gynoid chatbot Sophia. Gynoid. That is... That is I guess that's fem female android? I don't know. I, maybe that's... I'm, I'm assuming. The gynoid chatbot Sophia who was brought to the ongoing Davis World Economic Forum as part of its entertainment program, was reportedly rendered unresponsive when asked how Ukraine's endemic corruption problem can be solved. The episode was described by Ukrainian MP Aliana Skrum on her Facebook page. When Sofia was brought to Ukraine House at the Swiss Resort, Somebody asked her what can be done about the country's graft problem. And the robot's script 
that's uh, the, the quote from the MP. Script broke and processor hung up. And unfortunately, the report didn't include a video of the glitch. Oh man, if I would have had the video of that glitch, you know what I would have done? I would have zeroed in on the part where Sophia, she probably had this like quizzed expression on her face. Am I calling her a her? Why am I doing that? I don't know. I'm gonna call her a her anyway. I'm gonna assume her gender, her, bio, her, her robot gender. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But if I could have had that video and I could have had that moment where she locked up with the little bunny froze expression, I would have looped that sucker. I would have created a 10 hour video on YouTube of Sophia the robot locks up like a bunny, freezes like a bunny, but alas, no video. So. Since there's no video, I guess I guess we move on with our lives. Pujimon court blocked from being Catalonia's president. You get it, right? You get the joke, right? I don't have to spell that out for you. Pujimon court blocked Ten minutes. from being Catalonia's president. So a Spanish court nixes the Skype presidency before it ever get a chance gets a chance to start. Carlos Carle Pujimon received the bad news from a Spanish court this past Friday with Bougemont being blocked, court blocked by the courts, uh, from becoming the president of Catalonia. Once again, all eyes are now on the parliament because what's going to happen is tomorrow, that's Tuesday, January 30th, 2018, the, the parliament is set to vote on who the president will be. Now, the thing is, there's only one presidential candidate listed, and that's, uh, and that's Pujimon. So this is from the BBC. Uh, uh, their headline is, Catalonia's Pujimon cannot lead from abroad court rules. Now, I ask you, which, which headline's better? Come on. Pujimon court blocked from being Catalonia's president? Or, come on, come on, come on, you got to give it to me. I totally, you know what, I outdid BBC. I should be writing for BBC, but then I'd have to write lies and, I don't necessarily want to do that. Unless they pay me really well. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. A Spanish court has moved to block pro-independence politician Carle Pogemont from assuming the presidency of Catalonia. The former leader has been living in Brussels since he declared independence in October, resulting in charges of sedition and rebellion against him. Mr. Pogemont is the only candidate. <laughs> there it is. He's the only candidate for the Catalonian presidency. So the charges against the quote-unquote separatist leader are serious and could result in 30 years in prison. By the way, a trend like that, BBC writer, totally in the pocket of the EU statocracy, it goes ahead with a narrative that Pujimon is anything but a dude that represents people who just don't want to be ruled by the insanity in Madrid. But let's call him a separatist leader and let's, you know, let's, 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 I mean, uh, he is facing 30 years in prison. That's true. But the sentence could have been written a lot differently. Pujimon, the freedom fighter, faces an unjust penalty of 30 years in prison. There you go. See, you could have written it like that, but you're not going to do that because you're the BB freaking C and you absolutely are part of the EU statocracy. Blockchain, the Netflix killer. Blockchain's decentralized model might undermine the current centralized models of Netflix, YouTube, Twitch, cable, and more. That is, if you're to believe this editorial from Wizwan Verk, writing in VentureBeast.com. Now, I don't necessarily normally put uh, editorials and headlines that you may have missed, but I thought this was something that was, that was worth uh, uh, exploring, and I'd be anxious to get feedback from folks how, how, how you might feel about this. And this is from VentureBeast.com, and I'll just read just... Let me find the, the the key part. Blockchain has the power to fundamentally disrupt. The, this is uh, this is this dude speaking, not me. Blockchain has the power to fundamentally disrupt the entertainment industry because it brings out a completely new decentralized model for content content distribution. In a blockchain, computers all over the world act together in a peer-to-peer -to -peer network to work out or work on some task. There is no central server 
or authority. Today, Netflix and cable still rely on the idea of centralized aggregation and distribution. Content creators must get past some number of gatekeepers and strike business deals with the network, which then puts the content on the server and distributes it over the air via coaxial or more recently over the internet directly, whatever. In a decentralized world, no single website or authority would have a say over what content is to be distributed and how it will reach the last mile. No website would be able to block specific content with decentralized apps for entertainment, whether it's for live streaming or on-demand video, thousands of computers around the world would act as broadcasters in a mesh network that is not hierarchical. And I'll add to this, and it may have been maybe in the article or, or, or not, I don't know. But I will add to this the other part of that is yeah, Netflix and these other content providers, they're deciding what content to invest in in the first place. They're spending millions and millions of dollars to produce these TV series and uh, movies. But that, mm, well, you could get funded on the blockchain. So you could end up having your show funded, it's going to be paid for in advance. So the show Five is made, minutes. people make their money up front from people paying them to make the show. Once the show is made, it's out there. And good luck, IP. Good freaking luck, IP. I could go on a lot more about this topic. I'm probably going to save it for an upcoming is daily. Big Social appeases Congress, but will it be enough? It seems Big Social is anxious to prove their good state sycophants attempting to entertain the Russia scare trials being held by the U.S. Congress. They've recently answered a lot more questions put to them by Congress in what appears to be a bid to head off big social rigs at the pass. And this is from Fox News. Ooh, ooh, I don't know how I did that. It's an accident. I, I, I don't normally share Fox News. So to have two Fox News stories and one headline you may have missed, Oh, man. Oh, well. I'm going to move on. Con this is from Fox News. Congress on Thursday published responses by Facebook, Twitter, and Google to question about how Russia used their platforms to spread misinformation amidst the 2016 presidential election. The responses, more than 100 pages in all, answered a range of questions from lawmakers, including the possibility of collusion between the Trump campaign, campaign and Russia, how each firm's policies applied to the actions of foreign nationals, and what type of data each company has collected on Russia's meddling. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm just going to move on. Cause it's a freaking Fox News story. Don't get me wrong. I feel the same way if it was MSNBC or, C C or CNN. So, so don't be triggered if you like Fox News by what I just said. Turkey takes two Greek islets, warns Greece not to come back. So, well, the Turks are invading Afrin, and, you know, they're, while they're doing that, they're making threats to Greece. Uh, they're islet hopping, as it were, in the Aegean, and they're staking claims to two islets that belong to Greece, blocking Greek ships from the two islets that belong to Greece. So this is from Hurriyet Daily News. Now, remember Hurriyet Daily News, that's a Turkish outlet, so you're going to... Here's some bias here. The Turkish Coast Guard on January 28th blocked Greece's defense minister from approaching a pair of disputed islets in the Aegean Sea, according to Turkey's Interior Ministry. Coast Guard officers warned off Panos Kamenos, who was heading to the Kardak Imaya islets in an assault boat to lay a wreath there for three Greek military personnel who died during the 1996 Kardak crisis. Following the warning, the Greek boat left Turkey's territorial waters. No, it's, it's not territorial waters, you freaking Turkish freaking liars. By the way, Two I've minutes. taken to call Turkey uh, Turk Reich. It is the Turk Reich. And I don't mean to disparage Turks. I don't have anything against Turks. It's all, it's all totally targeted on the Erdogan regime. It is the Turk Reich. In a statement, Turkish Interior Minister Suleyam Soylu said the Coast Guard units did what was necessary. What was necessary for the Turk Reich, yes. Now oh, we're running out of time here, so let me, I'm going to, oh man. I'm not going to get to Japan to get Minority Report styled AI police tool. You're going to have to go to isheadlines.com to find that. i got to cover this one. Uh, 
Uh, just so you don't think that I'm a, a, a pro-Russian Putin operative. Russian opposition leader arrested, YouTube channel threatened. Two stories highlight how the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, ain't got no time for no democratic opposition in the upcoming presidential elections. Rising opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, one has been minute. arrested in one protest and Russia attempted and failed to remove his YouTube channel just another day in Putintopia. And I have the two headlines here. Russian police try to pull the plug, but Navalny's YouTube protest rolls on. And Russian opposition leader arrested amid election protest. And here are some headlines that we not get to today. So, songwriters to get higher revenues from streaming services. 30 University seconds. Herpes vaccine tests in hotel rooms expode. Former Russian press secretary's FBI death report raises suspicions. Denmark debates prosecuting teens over Facebook sex video. Turkey's attack on Syrian Kurds could overturn the entire region. Rahava delegation talks Afrin with Ten seconds. Holland in Paris. Syria's Kurds boycott Russia peace talks over Turkish Afrin offensive. Kurdistan region parliament to discuss Afrin situation. There you go. That's it. That's all I got for you. The clock has run out, so there's nothing more that I can do. Folks, that is all we have for today's headlines you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for January 29th, 2018. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news until tomorrow at 1230 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.